Hi, everybody. This is Patricia and Michelle. We're here together to talk to you about another topic, which we're going to be covering. And that is something that I'd like to call being able to bring back the purity in your relationships. So as we approach the holidays here, a lot of people are thrown together with people that they sometimes might consider toxic, uh, such as family, siblings, relatives, um, dealing with like an office party or an office situation and just the intensity of the holidays. So Michelle and I were talking about this and we thought this is a really good topic to open up for people because you get all of the you know, glitter and the lights and everything is warm and fuzzy and hot cocoa. But you have the other flip side to it, which is that it is a lonely time for people. It is a time where people have lost someone significant or they're not with someone significant to make the holidays more enjoyable for them or even enjoyable at all. Some people feel so lonely and some people feel actually desolate and suicidal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Michelle, what um, what kind of things do you uh, observe with people? I feel this heightened level of stress, and it's the expectation of having to do things that really put us on the spot and make us feel really uncomfortable, and we don't really want to, you know, do it or be around it, but there's an obligation and there's also just a lot of drinking that's going on and stuff that, you know, is helping us to cope in really unhealthy ways. <laughs> yeah. Did someone once asked me, which comes first, the addiction or the, you know, does it, in other words, does it run in the family? What I find is it does run in families. I think that scientifically, we kind of know this that addictions or multiple addictions or being cross-addicted runs in families. But it's when someone picks up, and one of the things that I would like to personally say to people is, don't pick up. If you can do without it, do without it, okay? Your holiday may still be weird, but you'll feel better. Um, but that accounts for a lot of the ugliness that happens around holidays too. And it's not just that, it's how people behave. It's, you know, uh, like Michelle said, it's a stressful time of year. Now, family dynamics come into this. Mm -hmm. One of the family dynamics I notice a lot is the matriarch. The matriarch has to boss over everything and everyone, and it's her way, and like, it's her way or the highway, and, you know, everyone runs for the wine bar <laughs> when the matriarch is on the war path. Everyone gets assigned their tasks or their to do things. Yeah. And I feel like everybody's supposed to get along. <laughs> yeah. But and there's <laughs> comments that are being thrown out and things that are like jabs. And it's like very tense, very tense. Yeah. You know, this is, it's so prevalent that Saturday Night Live has been doing skits about <laughs> it now for a couple of years and they're like dead on. It's like, I mean, it's funny because it's someone else's family, but this stuff is happening in families all across the land. Yes. And, you know, the heart of Christmas is connection, connecting and being able to be with each other. And just, I feel that spirit myself. I love this time of year. I love the lights. I love just the goodness, the giving and how it can, you know, make you feel uplifted. So how can, you know, we do that? Well, one of the ways that I do this with people is um, something you and I both kind of know about self-regulation of emotions. Yes. Catching your triggers. Um, if, you know, getting drunk is one of the triggers or someone else getting drunk, hammered, high, whatever it is, if that's a trigger, you got to know it. How do you do this then? How do you navigate it and have as pleasant a time as possible? Um you're regulating yourself. You, in many ways, other than taking car keys, may not have much control over the other people. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, I've I've seen things. I mean, I'm Polish. Uh, we used to have uh, gatherings where they literally, even before the words designated driver came around, we'd have to designate who's going to drive who home 
Uh, we've had people, we've had weddings where they had to have a policeman present because people would get violent. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they would, the men would wind up getting in drunken fights with each other. And that, you know, that unfortunately, that violence is in families. So, you know, one of the other things you and I talked about was along the lines of loneliness, feeling suicidal, Mm -hmm. you know, and you have the other end of the spectrum feeling hostile. How do you balance that? Because some people feel hostile and some people feel like a little turtle who wants to just erase themselves. And they're also seeing it and they're watching from the outside and they're not feeling engaged in it. And it's, it's an awful feeling to be seeing everybody else all happy and connected and family and gifts and to be that person that struggles with maybe a relationships that that have gone by the wayside that they're not connected to anymore that yeah they feel that they're just so alone yes the, you know, the feeling of being an outcast is not a good thing, even if people tend to pride themselves on it. Like for a while, I would kind of actually pride myself on being the black sheep of my family. But I'm going to dig on this a little bit here. And we're going to talk about why would you feel like this? Now, sometimes people, when they're born, they feel they're born into the wrong family. They feel that they're born into like some kind of you know, they're born to people that don't understand them, that they don't understand. You can feel very different. But as the years go by, sometimes the gap widens even more. And it's hard to find commonalities with people or gratitude. Mm-hmm. And here's what I have found. This is so crazy. You're together for a reason. You came together. And while you can have friends and other families that take you in there's a reason and some of that reason means it needs to be healed something needs healing or patching over or Mm -hmm. um, something needs to be remedied fixed maybe not entirely broken but not entirely functional either another thing you and I talked about this is people blurting out stuff (laughs) what is it about us that people just blurt out stuff sometimes Yeah. And we have no conscious, you know, about how that's going to feel for that person uh, sitting across the table. And, you know, just to even be there was really a difficult time for them to be there that day. Yeah. What I have found is that sometimes our presence does make people pop stuff out. Now we're here, Michelle and I are here to help you take that to another level. How would you move past that weird stuff that happens, the weird conversations, the awkward moments, um, the hurtful moments, the moments that make people just call each other toxic and let it pop out, let the garbage land where it needs to and up level. How would you like to actually get around to be neutral with these people? neutral neutrality is not just for switzerland (laughs) it's for a lot of people because otherwise the little cold wars that happen i mean inside a house i mean you i have a friend right now she was telling i totally kind of forgot because she was like oh my husband and i didn't talk to each other for three days he finally called me (laughs) it's like oh yeah those cold wars are still happening in marriages between parents and child. And I believe there is a really great quote, Patricia, that you put on your Instagram. And it was about people being restored, renewed, redeemed. And how do we do it differently? So we're not just like, cut it off. Yeah. And we feel there's something wrong there. And we know that, you know, maybe we'd like to reconnect or do it differently, but we just don't know how. We just don't know how. Yeah, because a lot of people actually do miss their family. And a lot of times they miss the family that they think their family should be. And yet that family can become that family. I'm living proof of it. Yeah. You're living proof of it. Yes. 
Most definitely. And yes, the repair job is possible, but you have to start it. And I feel that Patricia, as you say that too, sometimes people think that they just have to drudge up everything from the past and hammer it out with that person. And it's just like at Christmas time, it's like, whoa, we're all supposed to be so happy. Ho, 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 right? And it's yeah. just, that's not, I don't know, for me, I'm like, it's difficult to, you've got to, you've got to catch, like you said, the triggers and uh, it's just not the place. Yeah. I think our stories are being told in Hollywood, like, you know, the, <laughs> the dysfunctional childhoods that you want to bring it out as soon as dad's there with the, yeah. night serving the turkey or something. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's just, it's very challenging for some people to even show up. And, you know, some people are too empathic to the extent that they feel responsible for other people's emotion. And people will love to do that to you. They'll love to make you feel guilty. They'll love to dump their garbage on you, their trauma, their drama. Mm. How do we stop the drama um, and enjoy a holiday? Because we can't all hide forever. People do miss each other. Yes. So, um, there may be people in your family who have gone through something such as a divorce. Now, you know, everyone hammering on that person when they're still licking their wounds isn't helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, people do have emotional wounds that they sometimes don't even talk about. Yes. And having, you know, that level of compassion and understand, understanding is the key to that. We really don't know what someone has gone through until we've sometimes even experienced it, but then it's being able to, as we up level it, it's being able to connect to it differently with a new set of eyes and a new feeling about it. Yes. The way that I teach people how to do this and how Michelle and I work is to do this through your energetic body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's the part of you that wants to naturally protect you. It's almost like having an energy immune system from people's toxic stuff, toxic people. Um, you know, some people really have to work during the holidays. Some people get a week off, you know, it's very subjective across the board, how people are experiencing any kind of holiday, whether, you know, whether it's this holiday or the end of the year, there's also a natural feeling of ending to things. We would like to be able to ride that energy of like, let's end some of this toxic stuff. Let's mm -hmm. end just feeling triggered. Let's use the energetic, natural side of you, your heart chakra, to help you deflect the unwanted things away from people. If they say something off color, we're going to tell you what to do. Yes. If and you're experiencing a trauma at their hand, we're going to tell you. Yeah. And stop the drama. The big thing around all of that too, is that yeah. drama, it's just like, it's contagious. Yeah. And we say drama, like that's sort of a facetious thing. Like, oh, there's a little bit of family drama. <laughs> you know, with some families, it, it gets so bad. I mean, we used to, we, we used to, the oven would catch on fire for several years in a row. But I believe <laughs> as you say, as you're saying that too, it's, it's so important to know that's, that's all we know. And when we know only that, then it's like, okay, well, I don't want to do that anymore. Cause it's like, that's that let's try this. Let's do this. Yes. What if you're trying to enjoy the holiday, but it, you're in a bad relationship or just a marriage that's going downhill? That was my experience. Mm -hmm. I would have everyone over with ex, he was an ex-husband at the time, he'd be sulking in the other room, you know? And all I could do was pray to God that, you know, somehow he wouldn't be disruptive somehow, somehow, you know? Mostly that was handled with alcohol. Because yes. as long as, you know, there, there was a supply of that. But, you know, having everyone get slashed and being concerned for everyone, that's not really enjoyable either, no. you know. And when we can let, let that go to let go of the grudges and all the stuff that we carry, because that's toxic in our yeah. body. Resentments. Yeah. 
all yes. of that stuff. There are places on our body that we carry these things. Yes. And believe it or not, the gut is only one part of those. These go way back into history. So mm-hmm. there's other parts of you that probably do need to clear and we're experts at it to help you get, get this stuff like peeled off of you so that you can have an enjoyable time. You can build a new foundation. You can have some tools, some go-to tools for helping you navigate the intricacies of this holiday and the next one. And to feel good, to be able to feel good at this time of year and to embrace and enjoy it with you know, the hot chocolate and just being outside in the, well, I'm, we're going to get snow this week. So, I mean, I love snow, snowshoeing, skiing, snow. you know, <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> but I know that for me, it's like when, when you be able, when you're able to feel that it's different, it's a different experience. And then it starts to feel like, Hey, I actually um, could go through this season totally different this year. Yeah there is now a choice. Yes. And you're able to leave a level where there really was no choice. You knew what was coming. You knew what to expect. You could almost write a script about it for crying out loud. (laughs) You know, a bad Christmas movie, a bad Hallmark movie where there's no happy ending. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now we get to reverse the flow and we are ready here to help you. Um, Michelle does one-on-one sessions, as do I, but we also have our group class coming up here for six weeks, starting mid-December, with the links are below so that you can join and learn, because if you're not engaging yourself, if you're not engaging your own essence to navigate this stuff, you're missing out. You're really missing out. There are natural parts of you to help you literally use the force on these people that you think are toxic. (laughs) So I love that. <laughs> I mean, let's let's turn it away from a Saturday night live and be like Wayne's world. <laughs> I love it. It's so yeah. much easier. Don't we don't don't we want easy? I do. <laughs> yeah. I am the queen of easy. I was like, if you know, if if I need to get through this, give me the easiest way to do it. And I get it all ready for other people to do it easy and have it be smooth. Are we going to laugh in our group? Oh, hell yeah. We laugh about stuff. Feel free to share. If it's too sensitive, you don't have to. If it's too traumatizing, please have a session with one of us Mm -hmm. because we will be here to help. This is what we do. We're not afraid to roll up our sleeves and, you know, find... I like to think of myself as sort of a deep sea diver going down to find the people that are trapped under the shipwreck, but they're still alive and we just need to get them up for air. That's what, you know, that's what I like to feel when it comes to heavy stuff that fell on you, that we're helping you. Yeah. Breathe again, live again, thrive again. We're meant to thrive through this holiday. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So thanks so much for watching and um, check it out. The links are below. Um, Check out Michelle's website, check out mine. And we hope to see you there. And we hope to have all of us have a wonderful holiday. Thanks. Bye now. Bye.